Welcome to the Reader House Author Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. I'm Alice Stockton Rossini. Join us here every Saturday night at 8 o'clock or listen to our podcast anytime on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, just to name a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where independent new authors come first. Mom, daughter, caretaker, health and wellness coach, Charlotte Street writes a beautiful tribute to her mom in her book, Miss Bear, My Oversized Coat and the Glasses That Hung Off My Nose series, Life Lessons and New Beginnings. How long have you been writing, Charlotte? Well, I always I always wrote poetry when I was a little girl. I, I would always write. And uh, I remember I was in my what my 20s or what have you and I had met uh, a friend and he was he worked in Manhattan and he was the president of Chase Bank JP Morgan and I read him a poem and he was like oh my goodness who told you about that in my life and I said no one that was something I wrote for me and he said he 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 said you need to keep writing because you have a way that you touch people and you relate to other people. And he went out and he bought me this, you know, uh, diary, this book, and he was like, Charlotte, continue to write. And I said, thank you. That, that was, you know, I mean, I just would always do that for fun. I had written that poem when I was 12 years old. I, he was just, telling me about certain things he was experiencing and he said hey I would like to hear one of your poems I said sure and I read that and he was like how did you know that was about my life I said I didn't I wrote this when I was 12 years old and this was always that kid you know I'm kind of I I would say I'm a nerd um, even though I modeled um, in in my life and worked in fashion and did all that, and I love it, um, but I see myself like I'm a nerd. I just would sit and and like watch people, love people. I I just love helping them, being around them, and I just always felt so happy but I I don't know I just was very attentive so it just was the feeling that I would receive what I would get when I woke up in the morning what I would feel what I would experience and then I would just write about it is this a book of poetry um well it does have a rhyming to it um I wrote Miss Bear when I had been a victim of a hate crime. And when I was at my parents' home, I was missing my mother because my mother was, <laughs> she was so funny. She was so passionate about life. And she just had a sense of humor and she was just amazing. And so being biracial I know that when my parents were younger it wasn't as it was for us where they could have um, a strong voice or a strong presence and um, my mother just always would tell us continue to have the laughter in your life whatever you go through whatever you experience always have the laughter and you will always get through it you will always see that sunrise you will always see that beauty in god's creation you will always see the good if you lose that laughter you've lost your life and so that you know miss bear is is that for me um i mean i just i feel that miss bear is for the child that lives in every adult and for the gift of life that lives in the heart of every child. As adults, we don't ever lose what it feels like or what it felt like to being that child. 
we are you were innocent and just happy and full of joy and and wonder and splendor and um Unfortunately, we go through things and experiences that as an adult, we lose that. So despair, it's like, you know, don't ever lose that. I, I, you know, a single mom raising my children, it was uh, challenging. It wasn't challenging raising the children. It was challenging for everything else that was on the outside, trying to keep them from because my children were absolutely amazing. They were amazing no trouble they were just so lovely so beautiful and they just gave me love and they they allowed me to learn about who i was and helped me to grow to being better and so just having you know god in my life that's how i was raised um seeing how my family worked together um how amazing my upbringing was it was just so wonderful and having that kind of love is what we need in life you have to have that so that's why it, it was like a, a reconnecting re-evaluating and resolving that's what we all have to do that we all have to come together we all have to reunite we have to keep love we cannot waste time on insignificant things as intolerance there's too much of that in the world we have to well do we follow a story in this book is there a main character that we follow yeah yes um it it's miss bear so okay. miss bear is um her mom had passed of cancer um and that's why in the book i i really this is to honor my mother um, so the character is Miss Bear, and she wears her mom's oversized glasses and her mom's uh, fur mink cape, which tells you a lot about who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, but despite, uh, you know, people talk about her, the little kids are like, what is going on with her? And... Uh, <laughs> She's like this quirky little girl, you know, but she knows herself. She knows who she is and, and she's just absolutely authentic to who she is. She's just, she has a strong belief in herself and she understands the value of what love is and she understands the value of people and what her mom meant to her so she wears her mom's you know oversized coat and she has uh the kids in the neighborhood and i and i put in the book like different characters human characters animal characters and and that's like in life you have children right now you're going through so much in school and things like that and so it's about just remaining who you are you know, understanding that you are valuable, that you are important. And even though you are different, um, you are special. Does Miss Bear run into any conflicts? Does she run? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she does. Um, even though she's quite independent, you know, she has her, her, um, she loves reading, which I really, um, love that myself because it helps children to explore that a world um it helps them to grow in who they are um so miss bear is you know she's at the library and she has her friends you know they're called, you know looking at her whispering in the corner oh look at miss bear what is she doing you know and she's just like going along uh, about her business and wondering you know but she does ask the question um you know, why, why are they talking about me? Is it because of my oversized glasses and the cape that is too big for my, my shoulders? And she identifies with that, like, why are they talking about me? And I wanted to make that present because so many young people today are having a lot happening with social media and getting a lot of backlash from that and and just really understanding that you could be who you are and so she does 
and you have people that really support her and in her neighborhood you know she really connects with the store owners for her mom and she would go for tea and um the librarian who understands her and knows who she is and so she gets that and she just is like you know why are they laughing and she wondered she could never understand so it's just having that which we all have experienced in life yeah and it's so hard when you're a kid to know that it's okay to hang on to exactly who you are exactly it's them that you know it's especially girls it's terrible it's funny you should talk about social media um because i think it's just destroying all of us Uh, We we don't even realize how it's affecting us and making all of us feel less than, less than. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you realize that there's so many, you know, people have these, they're able to place themselves in pics that they're not even at. These, they are not being authentic. And that's what this book is about remaining true to yourself please don't think that because you have a beautiful heart because you are honest because you may not have you know millions of dollars in the bank darling don't don't forget that those are not important things you have to stay true to yourself you have to understand you have to be able to have a mentally, um, physically, emotionally, um, spiritual stability to yourself that has to remain true to you. You cannot lose that. And with that, you develop faith and keeping hope and, and having love. You have to have that because there's so much insecurity in this world and people are trying to manipulate that and take away from what is good. We don't sit down to the table anymore where we used to all the time. Never did I not. We were outside. We were together. We knew our neighbors. We talked to each other. Everyone knew where you belonged, what is happening. They were together. And that's why I always say we have to reconnect, we have to re-evaluate, we have to resolve, we have to know that they, we do have a reason and a purpose. And Miss Bear stays true to her reason and her purpose. And those were the lessons of her mother, what she was taught. And that's why I say that this book is a celebration of, re- of the love that you share with, with a parent and a child you need those connections social media is moving everyone away from that and they're isolating these children so when you're by yourself how do you know how to help yourself when you don't talk to those who've lived and walked in the steps that you're walking in right now you you have to have that you have to have that so she wasn't afraid to keep that and she's not afraid to represent and show up understanding that my parent made a por- an important effect on my life and I'm going to honor her and Aww. that's why yeah I can just see Miss Bear with her oversized coat and glasses <laughs> hanging off her nose like what a cute little stuffed animal that would be right <laughs> yes um, I'm I'm my mother had survived breast cancer for 35 years and she then passed one month of leukemia we had no idea She's when I was 12, she had returned home from breast cancer. Ah, oh. and um, that's when I got into the medical and cosmetology field because we had to bathe her, do her hair, feed her, dress her, you know. And she was the one who said, Charlotte, you need to go into a field where you could touch people because you have healing hands, and that actually led me to being prepared for t- for my son when he had um, brain cancer at 13. What a life you've had. Are you, I mean, now you're you're taking care of your dad. Yes. Are, are, are you able to get out and, and I can see you reading to little kids, yeah. talking to little kids. Are you able to do that? I am. The book, you know, it just 
um, came out and so I'm scheduling that and hopefully doing that with Barnes and Noble um, doing the book signing and reading the story and um, talking about Miss Bear. You got to keep writing. I am. I I'm. I finished another book and it's called It's Movie Day and that's a day I spend with my granddaughter. Nice. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Now, do you have a website or something? Where did I see that? It is called IamCharlotteStreet.com. All of that together. Uh, you can also find me at Charlotte Street, CHWC, um, Certified Health and Wellness Coach. I'm, I, you know, I'm getting all that together and and really uh, moving forward because my business was Charlotte Street Lively Living, which is on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's important that people live life lively every day, no matter what happens to you. You have to say, well, I'm I'm fabulous. Yes, every morning you get up. Okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm fabulous. Yes, because there are going to be things in life. And, and you know what? People, you know, when you have to say that to yourself, you have to have affirmation. And I would say that because it was challenging. It was challenging. And when people would ask, how are you? And it wasn't to be, you know, cocky. I'm fabulous. Because when you say things to yourself like that, I'm great, I'm brilliant, I'm, I'm wonderful. It's a beautiful day. You believe it and it helps you to see it. It helps people to find who you are. It helps you to set yourself out there. And people believe it. And you have to have a firm affirmation. You have to give that back to yourself. All right. Charlotte, thank you so much. I am charlottestreet.com. Yes, my name sounds like an address here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, darling. Thank you so much. And I, maybe we'll talk again. I would love it. You are so amazing. Thank you so much because you help women and men see who they are and sometimes we do things not even recognizing um what it does or what it means to other people and the fact that you take time to do this really helps us to believe our potential and our our dreams that can come true and so i thank you so much for that I have I have goosebumps all over me now. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Charlotte. Ever been the victim of identity theft? Samaria Paul Goff has, and so have several members of her family. Ordeals so frustrating, she was inspired to write her book, So Someone Stole Your Identity? Now what? Don't be a victim. What happened? Um, it happened to me like in two, 2000, in the early 2000s, and there was nothing in place at that time with the credit bureaus for you to do to protect yourself and so over the years i just kept calling and this happened to me in like 2000 i'm gonna say 2001 or so someone stole my uh my uh id and my um my social security card from my purse i went to a party i put my purse in a locked room in a closet and somebody broke went in the room and took my stuff my cell phone, my money, all of that. You know, how can they steal your social security number? Well, you can get it a lot of ways. And I do talk about, I do have a little small, you know, section in my book that tells you the different types of uh, identity theft. You can, you can go somewhere and give somebody information like they tried to do my, to my son when he was trying to get an apartment. And I had to block and freeze his credit and, you know, do some other things because they had already changed his address to start getting mail in an entirely different state. Wherever you give your social, people take numbers all the time. There's always some kind of crew somewhere doing something. And I asked that guy when we went to look at the department, I said, can you please put his paperwork away? Because you just have it sitting on a desk and we're going to go take a tour. It was the beginning of the month. My son wasn't moving into the next month. And then right before he got ready to move in, he said, oh, you know, I need to get his. Oh, no, he, he called my son and said he needed to get his. Um, his uh, financial information again. And I said, oh no, I gave that to you and I asked you to put that away. And he's like, well, I don't have it. I said, well, you need to find it. 
I don't know what he did, but I wasn't, we weren't giving it to him again. And then as soon as he said that, we, we ordered, you know, his credit report. And then we started getting these weird mailings. So I understood what was going on because it happened to me. And finally, maybe around 2010 or so for myself, the first time I dealt with this, they had something in place. And they told me, you know, call the Federal Trade Commission and see what, um, you know, do what they, you know, ask you to do. And actually, I got in a lot of other agencies, too. You know, different referrals from different people that each time I call somebody and it kind of led me one thing led me to another. And then I got, you know, that uh, the ID number from the Federal Trade Commission. And at that point, you know, um, I was able to call the bureaus because um, they don't help people these days. There has to be there has to be a change. I'm trying to figure out how how I can actually, you know, maybe facilitate a change in some kind of way, because the rules, according to the Fair Credit Report Act, they're not clear. They're not clear on how the credit bureau should handle it. And it says, but and if and things like that. And when that those words are used, it's not stable. What they do is they treat it like a regular, they didn't do me like that back back then, but then they've changed things now where they uh, will go in and still, you know, run everything through their system, e-Oscar, which they're not supposed to do. And then the credit, the, your credit, the creditors will say verified. They don't know you're a victim of identity theft. So they're going to say you did it. And they're going to say verified. And then the credit bureaus don't do anything. That's the, that's the reports I've been getting back from people that I know that are experiencing it. How do you lay out your book? Um, I, from beginning to end, like the first thing you need to do, it's a step-by-step guide. Okay. So the first thing you would do is, you know, go in. I mean, you'd uh, first um, call the Federal Trade Commission and do, you know, you know, follow their steps exactly. And then you go and file a police report. And after that, you go and, you know, contact the credit bureaus. Now, if the credit bureaus are not helping you, you then proceed to go on to your creditors. Because you can, you know, you can call them and um, let them know that you've been a victim. At that point, you should have your, your paperwork from the Federal Trade Commission, which you submit to the credit bureau and the uh, creditors. Sometimes it works with the credit bureaus. Sometimes it doesn't. That's why I stress in my book over and over and over, you have to be persistent. You might have to repeat steps. You just, there's no rhyme or reason, you know, as to what you may have to go back and do. How long does this take? Uh, when I did mine, it was like two or three weeks. But because, like I said, things have changed so much that the credit bureau is like, it's like pulling teeth. They don't want to actually um, remove those things from your credit. And they're not, they're supposed to block them. When you say I'm a victim of identity theft, they're supposed to immediately block everything that you say is a part of your identity theft. But again, like I said, they don't do that. So that gives whoever has your information more time yeah, it gives them more time to do whatever while they're playing around over here. Some people don't get anything done, is what I've been told. They just refuse to help them or refuse to even look into it. And they just keep saying, where is verified? That's why I keep on stressing persistence because, uh-uh, no, 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 verified. It's not verified if it's not mine, and I told you it's not mine. Because I've had some problems with them myself, even knowing what I'm doing when it comes to that situation. And I've had to, you know either ask for a supervisor or, you know, threaten in some type of way I'm going to do X, Y, Z and report them to the Federal Trade Commission, report them to, you know, other uh, other people. You know, it's, it's just, you just have to, like I say, you got to be persistent. You can't be shy. Yeah. So you, you say that it's important to, to really go over the helpful tips section. Yes, because I give like uh, different things like, um, and then um, I'm going to start doing some speaking engagements. And when I do, I'm going to give more information than that because there's other things, the other other small sub bureaus as well. So what are some of the things that we should avoid? Well, first of all, you should leave your social security number at home, card at home in a safe place where nobody can get it. You shouldn't be, um, you shouldn't take it with you when you go places. Like some people will take and then uh, take their car with them everywhere they go. And then I used to work in HR at a company I worked for before, mm -hmm. and um, they were so quick to give me their social security number to try to get a job. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't need your social security number. And don't be so quick to give out that number. Okay. And then I also, I go over eliminating uh, harassment, harassing phone calls from creditors. There's a system to that as well. Uh, when your uh, information is frozen with the bureaus, the credit, if you apply for credit, they, by law, they are supposed to call you away from wherever you're applying and, and verify that it's you. 
with a series of questions before you get any credit. So that would that that's supposed to keep people from um getting anything without your permit without you know you knowing about it. But it doesn't always work because some creditors don't call. Like there's mortgage identity theft, they have child identity theft. There's so many, so many different um types of identity theft. You know, you can go to the hospital and your information, you know, is taken from you. So you shouldn't be so quick to give out your social security number. If you don't have to, don't give it out. And if so, try to do the last four digits, the last four digits. Okay. Now, child identity theft, when they look you up, like if an adult tried to use a child's number, you would hope that it would come up that this person's only nine years old, right? But it doesn't always do that. No, it doesn't always come up like that. And then if they know somebody and they are, like, say, someone works somewhere and they know them and they know they're doing it, they're going to run it through anyway. So there's so many different things that, you know, people can get past. So do you share stories, horror stories of identity theft? Yeah, I do. I share mine and my son's and um, my brother was a victim as well. So I had to help him out too. We just had some things on his credit that weren't his. So that's how we, uh, we helped him. Uh, I helped him restore his credit. And then a couple of people that I've worked with before, I've helped them with different situations. You say that um, there's debt collector harassment information? Yes. Yes. Sometimes the credit bureaus don't take it seriously. Okay. And they don't really do anything about it. So that just means nothing's happening. So those credit creditors are going to start calling you. And some of those creditors can be very ruthless. They'll call every hour and things like that. And they shouldn't, but they will. So if that happens to you, you have to take notes. So we'll say, for instance, someone calls and I answer the phone and they say, this is uh, whoever from XYZ agency. What I would do is take a photo of that call on my phone and then I would start a, a Word, Word or Excel uh, spreadsheet. And then I would put what number they call from, the company name, and any information in that same little area as to... Um, as to um, what happened on the call. If they left a message, they left a name or what have you. Be detailed like that because there are consumer credit, uh, consumer attorneys out there that you can reach out to that, that, that can help you stop with the harassment and get a settlement for you as well. Would you recommend that if you can't get, if you can't do it yourself? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would recommend that if someone was harassing me, I would definitely start taking those notes because if not, and when your attorney goes to court, there's no proof that they were actually calling you. So I, I tell I, I have a little section in here that tells you how to do that. And I have put an example in here in my book also of how how to list it. So because those creditors call you from different numbers as well. So when they call you from another number, you start, you know, you put their name and then you put that phone number and one, two, three, four, how many times they call, you know, until they stop calling. Usually takes a couple of months, but um because they have to get up enough evidence. They'll tell you when to stop and when to start taking notes your attorney. But um, yeah, you can. There are laws in states that allow you to, you know, file a lawsuit uh, against the people that are harassing you. But you got to keep your, your, your things in, you know, in order. I, rec I recommend that as well when, you, um, when you're a victim of identity theft. And you're getting credit reports and you're having things removed. I recommend binders. I did mine with binders. I had um, clear, clear sheet covers and binders because you're going to go through there so much getting things from here and getting things from there. And you don't want to rip up your paper and you want to always write down who you spoke to, what the conversation was about. They all have identifying information, whether it be their team name or their when you call the bureaus. If it's not the team name, it may be like um, their ID, their ID number. Okay. So you keep all of that together in one, because they'll ask you something out of the blue. And I noticed that uh, maybe a couple of years ago, they started really, 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 really asking some serious questions. Like sometimes verifying things that you may not remember from 10, 15 years ago. Old, 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 old addresses. And then um, also for those tips, things to, to do, things you should be aware of, there are other sub bureaus out there as well. So the, uh, the credit bureaus are not the only ones that are doing that. 
There are other bureaus out there that collect information about you, and they're kind of called like sub bureaus. So there's one I don't know if you've ever heard of it, like Nexus Lexus. Okay. They co- they're supposed to collect only insurance information. So you know how um, when you get new insurance, mm-hmm. they check you, they check through Nexus Lexus to see what you what you have there, whether or not they're going to approve you on insurance. Okay. And they also do a credit check, like a soft credit check on you through your insurance as well. People don't know that, but they do. The insurance companies do that. And then um, when they go through LexisNexis, that's all they're supposed to do. But let me tell you about LexisNexis. What they do is that's, that's their one, one and only job. When did you have insurance? When did it start? When did it end? Did you have an accident? Did you get a settlement? Did the, 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 and on and on and on. That's what they're supposed to be listing. But they list old addresses, old phone numbers, things that are way past seven years. And then they'll fight you not to remove things. I I, I um, actually disputed my entire report three or four times. It sounds okay. like a full-time job. Almost. It took, like I said, it took me about two or three weeks. I had 14 items on one, 16 on another one, and 12 on another one. Yeah, all day and all night. That's all I did was, was uh, and that's why mine left, you know, I got rid of it pretty quickly because I was on it. And it was at the very beginning when they were doing things that they were supposed to do correctly. When I talk to people constantly, you would be so surprised that people don't know anything about their credit. They don't pull their credit. I think you should pull it every so often just to make sure. You'd be surprised. Your address is wrong. Your name is wrong. Things on there that are just not right. You should dispute anything. And I mean anything because people don't know that those things affect you. That's a good idea because the only time I would do it is if, if I was buying a house, right? Like, yeah. you don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. They check. But other than that, why would you check your credit rating? To make sure everything is right, because more than likely you're going to find some type of mistake. There may be an inquiry on there. Your address may be incorrect. Like, my name is always wrong. <laughs> I mean, I always have like seven or eight names, sometimes more. And when you go out to buy a car, you go out to buy a home or, and other things too, even credit cards. They take it up, they take it a month with me. They take it amongst themselves and shorten my name. Like they might put Samaria Paul. They might put Samaria Paul Golf. A height without a hyphen. They might put Samaria Golf. And then I have all these names coming through on my credit bureau. They spell my name wrong and that shows up. However, someone puts something in when you apply for something, that that shows up on your report. And then not, even now with the name, they, they're giving you, a, they try to give you a problem because it's like, but it's your name. It's a variation of your name. I said, but it's not my name though. Yeah. You should have my name on there. There should be one name on there. Right. Right. That's it. I'm also hyphenated. But, they try to leave out the hyphen and make it one name. Yep. They cut it off at ROSS. It's so annoying. Yeah, it is so annoying. so annoying. All right. So what's next? My first stop is the county. I used to be a case manager for the county for the game program. And um, I decided that, you know, that would be a good place for me to speak because they deal with so many participants around the um, the county. So uh, we used to have people that would come in and speak to us like they take half a group now and half group later. So I wanted to start in that area and they are a Fortune 500 company as well. Are you going to keep writing? Yeah, I'll keep writing. I have a couple ideas for other books, so maybe in the future I may do something else. Finish this up and make sure that it was out there because I think it's so important for people to know. All right. You take care. Thank you so much. You have a nice day. Thanks. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this edition of the Reader House Author Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. I'm Alice Stockton Rossini. We hope to see you back here every Saturday night at 8 o'clock or listen to our podcast anytime on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, just to name a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where independent new authors come first.